Go. Hello, uh, viewers. We are the Music Man. And I am Mr. Keenan. And I have my friends here. Mr. Payton. Whoa, Mr. Jake. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't uh, been tuning in, um, I've been doing uh, a lot of piano lessons. Uh, I'm just going to start off by playing a little song that I uh, have been writing over the past couple weeks called Magnolia. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I love writing music, and that's uh, the piano is a really great tool for doing that. Um, cool. Yes, yeah, so that was called Magnolia. It's a work in progress. All right. Um, so I'm going to start, or we're going to start our lesson today with a little reminder on how to play the C major scale, which is uh, probably the, the hardest thing that we've worked on so far. So a little reminder, sit up nice and tall. I'm gonna pretend like uh, this part of your head is being pulled up by a string uh, from the ceiling. Uh, shoulders are down. Uh, you want your hands curved like this. And I'm gonna share. Ooh. Uh, Mr. Payton, can you uh, make the screen sharing available? Hello? Yeah. Oh, thanks, bud. Are we having technical difficulties? Yeah. Sorry, music matters. You should be able to share your screen. Yeah, it's not working. Uh, whack. Is the option just not there? When I hit it, it says host disabled attendee screen sharing. What? Oh, here we go. Now try it. Nice. Awesome. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. So. All right. So uh, you want your right thumb a middle C and your left pinky on the C below that. And if you don't, don't remember how to find C, it's to the left of the two block notes. Okay. Uh, so a little reminder, uh, you're gonna do C, D, and E with these three fingers. And then after your middle finger presses E, you're gonna cross your thumb under your middle finger. You're gonna go C, D, E, F. So now your thumb, now your thumb is on F and your hand should fall out like this over F, G, A, B, C. So you should be able to do. Thumb there, pointer finger there, <clears throat> middle finger there, uh, ring finger there, and your pinky in the higher C. And then to go back down, you cross your middle finger back over the F, and then these three fingers.
fingers should fall back down over E, D, and C. So the whole thing. And you can hit that B with your pointer finger too. And of course, always improvise over it. All right, so now we're going to add the left hand uh, for fun. So same idea uh, with the crossing, except it happens at a different point this time. So your left pinky is on C, and you play C, D, E, F, G. And then when you get to the G, you want to cross your middle finger over onto the A. And then same idea, you're get these three fingers, your thumb, pointer finger, middle finger on your left hand are gonna fall onto the A, B, and C. And then to go back down, you do C, B, A, cross your middle finger under the G. And then your fingers should fall out onto G, F, E, D, C, going down. So the whole thing slowly. Cross your middle finger over. Cross your middle finger under. I mean, uh, thumb under. And now, uh, the real tricky part is adding both hands. So I'm just going to play it. Uh, this is something that you're going to have to just spend time doing really slowly. All right, so that's that. Keep practicing that. A uh, little reminder about intervals and chords. Um, a half step is two notes directly together. A whole step is uh, has one note in between. Minor third has two notes in between. Uh, major third has three notes in between. Right? And then to build our, excuse me for a sec, I gotta turn the snare off on this snare drum. Distracting. There we go. Oh, two snare drums. Oh, all right. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. So to build a chord, and this type of chord is called a triad because there's three notes. So C major triad, you build it C, E, and G. And it's a major triad because these bottom two notes are a major third apart. And you're just playing with your thumb, middle finger, and pinky with your right hand. And then same with your left hand. Okay, try playing them together. All right. And then to build an uh, I believe we did G major triad. We're going to add F major this week. So F major triad is F, A, and C. And same idea. You could just play it with your thumb, middle finger, and pinky. Practice hopping between them. And then a G major triad is G, B, and D. This note right here is D, even though it's not labeled. Cool, so you can practice playing all three of those triads. All right, and then to play uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb like we did last week, you have to play your G major triad a little bit differently. So instead of doing G, B, and D, you're doing it with B in the bottom. Uh, so we do it from here. B is in the bottom, and then D, and then G. And you can move between your C major and your G major really easily by just moving your, uh, we're just doing left hand right now, so you can play the melody in your right hand. You just move your pinky and your middle finger down uh, one white key each. So your middle, middle finger and pinky are on C and E, and then they're going to move over to D and B. Okay. And 
and just a reminder of how to play it. Snare is strong. Oh, it's so much better. Sorry, guys. And then the next note you play G major. So I'll, I'll go over that one more time. C major. Oh, sorry. So when you go to the D there, it's G major. Back to C major. C major again. G major. Back to C. About a week ago, we learned Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I'm just going to play it for you real quick. Um, and that one's going to have an F major triad in it as well. Uh, but we'll go over that later. I did a little fancy ending. It's not how we're going to do it, but I was just feeling it. All right. So for my portion of piano players that I'd like to show you, uh, this is the band Hiatus Coyote, and their piano player, Simon, is fantastic. He plays a lot of Rhodes, too, like we've been talking about, a lot of synthesizers. Um, yeah, I, and I just I love this band so much. I've seen him live, I think, three times now, four times. Uh, the singer is amazing. Uh, bass player is amazing. It's just a quartet. Uh, drummer is fantastic. They're from Australia. So, this is a live version of their song Molasses. Uh, which we played. Uh, Mr. Jake and Mr. Peyton can uh, get on with their portions. But uh, yeah, Hi, it's Coyote, one of, my, one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, I love how the keyboard player like really matches the, the vocal line. It's really harmonized with her. And, um, I don't know if you guys noticed in the chorus, he was doing some synthesizer stuff too, and yeah, really cool. So. All right, thank you, Mr. Keenan. That's one of my favorite High Age Coyote songs for sure. Yep. Uh, we would definitely be doing our children a disservice if we did not put them on to that. All right. So if you guys caught the video from last week with Mr. Keenan and Miss Kalita, um, <clears throat> This week uh, will be all about the trumpet. Um, today we're going to start with the history of the trumpet, and then we'll get into different styles of music that the trumpet is used in, uh, more specifically, more in depth. But today I just want to go over like a general background of all the things dealing with the trumpet. So let's get this party started. Here we go. All right, story time with Mr. Payton. History of the trumpet. Oh boy, here we go. We're gonna start with the natural or baroque trumpet. Um, the bar we're gonna start with the natural trumpet because the natural trumpet is what you see this guy over here holding in his hands. You see he's got like his one arm up like this, and his hand is on his hip. Well, during those days, those were the first real trumpeters um, that you guys should be concerned about. Um, and they called it the nat well, it wasn't called the natural trumpet then, but um, the, the reason why they call it the natural trumpet now is because the trumpet that we use 
has these beautiful things called valves. But, as you can see in that picture, there's nothing on it. It's just a big, long tube. So, how, how do we make sound? How do we change the pitch? I'm sure Mr. Keeney has gone over this in a lot of your uh, classes, and I know. I haven't gotten to it with my trombone kids yet, but um, everything is done with the air and the embouchure. So they change all their notes with just changing the speed of the air from changing the way that they shape their tongue and letting their lips react and kind of like, you know, massaging it. You know, for you trumpet players, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But for the um, woodwind players, uh, let's see if I can do this right now. Sorry, Mr. Page just put chapstick on. But essentially, they're controlling this uh, free buzzing sound that um, the trumpet, the natural trumpet, just amplifies. So they're doing. And they're putting that into the trumpet, and then that trumpet will kind of chop that up into different notes. But. On the natural trumpet, you can only get certain notes. You know, when you guys play and you blow, you can kind of play a normal scale like. But on this thing, you just had to go. Then it just kind of kept skipping and skipping. And when you get higher, the notes get a little bit closer and closer and closer together. But everything had to be done with just your face. Um, they were mainly used for military initially, like whenever like the old, old, old trumpets were using for like war calls and that kind of thing. Um, but eventually got worked into the mainstream repertoire, like a lot of the composers we talked about from Classical Week, like, um, uh, we didn't get to Haydn, but we'll get to Haydn a little bit. Uh, we talked about Bach, uses it a lot, um, Mozart, um, uh, Telemann, actually, have some Telemann for you in a sec, uh, Vivaldi, uh, and a couple others. But I'm going to show you guys a clip of this natural trumpet. This will actually be a Baroque trumpet. Now, the difference between a natural trumpet and a Baroque trumpet is the Baroque trumpet is a new version of the natural trumpet that was made recently, actually. Um, I say recently, in the 20th century. But the difference is it has holes. Whereas the old school version had no holes and you just kind of had to go. Or something crazy like that. And it's all here and you're only just putting it into like the trumpet microphone. Um, these holes kind of help you, uh, I guess, hone in on the notes. Uh, let's pull this up. A couple things I want you to look slash listen for is obviously, how does it sound different from your trumpet? Uh, how's the size different? How's the shape different? And also check out the mouthpiece. It's a little different. Go over here. Let me make sure I'm sharing the audio as well. One sec, guys. Let's see if this is going to come through. I think I'm sharing the computer audio. Oh, I know what's happening. Sorry, guys. Let's try it now. There we go.
Mr. Keenan and Mr. Jake can definitely attest to how hard that is. Very, very, very difficult on the natural trumpet to be that agile. You know, you guys can't even tell if you close your eyes. You'd probably imagine him moving his fingers around a little bit. But, um, yeah, there were, uh, as you can see, no valves or holes, actually, used in that video. So, all right. There we go. The next thing that was invented was the key trumpet. So, I want you guys to take a look at this picture. <clears throat> Looks pretty funky. They're more like little uh, little flaps or little like things that just kind of cover up the holes. Um, as you can see, there's about it's hard to say. There are three big ones for sure, but I'm pretty sure the little ones on the side also affect the pitch as well. I have personally never played a key trumpet, but it is an important step in learning uh, the history of the trumpet. So this is the first one that they were like, hmm, well. We're tired of busting our faces open, trying to, like, you know, get all these super high pitches and all this agile stuff with no help. So, naturally, mechanics and inventors and obviously other musicians, um, you know, banded together and were like, we need a trumpet that is a little bit easier to play. So, they added these keys to it, which added those chromatic notes, which, um, you know, on the, uh, on the natural trumpet, um, are a lot harder to get. You can't get them until you're like way, way, way screaming up high, high, high. And on this, you can get them in a pretty comfortable range because of the keys. The same way you guys practice your scales when you're playing, like this so like a C or C and a B, and then you go back up to C. Like that's like a chromatic distance, and um, that's kind of all started with the key trumpet. Uh, I'm going to play you guys a little bit of the Haydn trumpet concerto played on that keyed instrument, the original instrument it was uh, written for. I want you to look at how much more does it look like the trumpet than what we are used to, how many keys do you see, and do you think it's easier or harder than the Baroque or Nash trumpet? Oh. Sorry, technical difficulties go lower today. That sounds a little closer to the trumpet that we're used to. And actually, it pause at a pretty good time. Let's count the keys. I see one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven keys. Can you imagine having to navigate seven keys? The woodwind players do it all the time. All right. Now, another trumpet variant I wanted to show you guys today. It's the bugle. Uh, I'm sure you guys have definitely seen this on the walls of maybe some antique shops. Um, you've probably seen it in your classrooms even. They should be on the example boards of um, different brass instruments because this is kind of like what everyone thinks is uh, the true predecessor to the trumpet. It's one of them, but this is the most widely known because it was used so much in the modern army era. Um, uh, like I said, like it's almost exclusively a military instrument. Uh, the difference between the key trumpet and the baroque trumpet and the bugle is the bugle is very, very similar to the trumpet in that, like, it's literally a trumpet without valves. Um, as you can see, the army uh, personnel over here uh, is carrying one while he's, uh, man, I wish I knew what war this was from, but uh, I digress. Um, yeah, usually uh, these are played at different times. Uh, actually, when I was at a summer camp, um, all the trumpet players at this camp were tasked with learning these calls because um, they can be played on normal trumpet um, as well. Uh, we were tasked with learning these. Uh, so one, we would play when it was time for people to come back to their cabins. Another one was uh, lights out. And another one was uh, the good morning one that let everyone know all the facilities were open for the morning. And we had to learn all three of those and have to play them at different points and different sections of the uh, of the campus. So, you know, and people would walk around us, but it takes a lot of concentration to play these, even though they're kind of simple, which I will show you now. I'm going to show you guys a recording of taps. Now, you've probably heard taps at like a Veterans uh, Day uh, situation where it's, uh, you guys all get together in the gym and you talk about like honor and America and all that beautiful stuff. Uh, and usually someone will play taps. Uh, also, if you have any family members who are in the uh, armed forces of any type and they were to fall in battle for whatever reason, um, they would have taps played at their funeral. So here is a recording of that done by the Pershings on the Army Band. So that's a bugle. Ah, other way. Next up, the cornet. Uh, I may or may not have like shown you guys this at some point, but you definitely have seen a cornet before. A cornet is the closest trumpet variant to the trumpet there is. Um, the cornet was invented in the early 1800s uh, when they added valves to these things called post horns. Uh, post horn was kind of like a little cylindrical thing. Uh, probably like this big around, and they finally decided, we're going to put buttons on this thing. Uh, what we know as the normal piston valves, these, uh, were done in France, I believe, in the early 1800s, around like 1830-ish or so. Um, the cornet, though, is a little bit more mellow sounding than the trumpet. Uh, the trumpet is very like, bah, like whenever you guys play really loud on the trumpet, 
trumpet is very like, like oh my god my ears ah uh but the cornet doesn't really do that unless you really push it um the cornet's more of a slight more fleeting and sparkly kind of sound uh which i will show you guys now um it's usually used for french solo pieces one of which i will show you and also british brass bands um another one which i will show you uh and you also might want to look out for a little cameo uh you might know someone in the ensemble let's take a look so you notice in this band all the trumpet players are playing cornet except for two who are playing piccolo trumpet but we'll get into piccolo trumpet later this week Was that Matt Suckling I saw too? Oh yeah, man, you better believe it. <laughs> and end our history of trumpet, uh, we're gonna have one last little cornet ditty uh, with one of my favorite trumpet players, Wynton Marsalis, when he was really, really young, closer to our age. Now he's like 50, but uh, this video should be seen by every young aspiring trumpet player and just person who wants to be loud. Uh, yeah, enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
Nothing like that excellent reminder of I need to go practice. <laughs> well, Mr. Jake, it's all yours. Well, actually, gentlemen, I was going to say that's probably a good time to stop this video. We're coming up on like almost an hour. Uh, I'm going to do, I'll do my little full song portion separately since that's probably over five minutes too. I think it's a good time to stop. But that was excellent. Okay. Oh. Every time when you guys show videos of like concerts and performances, I'm just like, man, remember that? Remember when we used to play music and share it with other people? I can't wait for that day to come back. Yeah, I think about it every day, for sure. Yeah. It's like, and it's not even like I took it for granted before necessarily. Oh, where'd Mr. Payton go? All right, I think we are low. I think we're low on connection here. So um, I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Join me on my video for the full sing-along, and we'll see you next time.